Yeah. And what is the most requested head-to-head -head we get in terms of irons at the minute? I think it's the Mizuno 225 versus the Callaway Apex. Okay, that's today's video then. That's what we'll do. So if I'm doing a head-to-head, -head, the first thing I'm going to ask myself is, as a viewer, what would I want to find out? And the big thing for me is I want the differences. I want to know what separates these two clubs and what makes one better or not than the other. Now, as with all my content and particularly a head-to-head, -head, I want your feedback. I want to know who's playing the uh, Apex right now and how are you getting on with them, how are they performing. I want to know who's considering buying the 225s right now. I want to know anyone who's thinking of swapping out of Apex into 225s because it's a possible move on from one to the other. I'm going to give you my opinion on how I think these things perform and like I said in the intro, what separates them both. I'm going to start off with the way these two look. Now plenty of shiny chrome on both of these products so they appeal to me on the eye and I think that Apex, I said in a previous sort of uh, review, I think it was another head to head, and the only thing I'd say about Apex is the sort of styling has been around now for quite a while and I think maybe it's time that Callaway refreshed that a little bit. I do think it looks a really good eye and it's got particularly its unique shape in terms of the sole in as well and that for me is um, it's a really interesting one but it's very much a standout Callaway product you instantly recognize it the Mizuno Pro 225 or Mizuno Pro range in general for me though has become the benchmark in terms of how, how irons need to look right now stripped right back minimal markings love the retro um, lettering there's just well, for me personally, I don't know what is not to like. So from a looks perspective, I'm going Mizuno all day long. Now one of the things that appeals to me about both of these irons is the fact that they are forged and I am, um, well I'm really persuaded by sound and feel when I choose my irons. I want to see if we can pick up, we've tried before on placing microphones on the floor, not really worked. We'll see if we can pick up an audio difference between the two. Here we go, this is Apex first. Okay, so that was a real clean strike, no mat before ball, that was all about club and ball. Like I said, that was the apex. We'll do exactly the same now and try the 225. Come on, and we need another clean, crisp strike. A little bit more matty, I don't know. Maybe just a little bit more. But this is where there's a big difference yet again for me. Now, I don't know whether you did pick that up, but uh, having hit a lot of balls, I can certainly tell you there is a difference between these two. And it surprised me a little bit because when I reviewed the Apex originally when it first came out, I just said it was a great feeling iron. And it is a great feeling iron. But the problem is when you do a head to head and you switch in and out of clubs, you start to notice the differences between the two. And without doubt, whatever they've done, Mizuno and the 225 has a softer, more muted feel to it. There is no doubt whatsoever in my mind that that is the better feeling and therefore better sounding iron. So again, I'm still swaying towards that 225 at this stage. Now the next thing I want to know, and surely you do as average golfers, every manufacturer now to claims that their irons, their product, is more forgiving than its predecessor and its competitor. And what I want to know is, and I've been paying careful attention to this of late, is can we see whether or not that is factual or not? And the only way I've sort of come up with a great way by using TrackMan, in my opinion, is by looking at impact location. So where we have or I have struck the ball on the face, analyzing two bits of data. So a shot that comes out the middle, comparing it to one that comes out of the heel or toe, an off center hit. And that for me has provided me with some great sort of, well, it's backing up a suggestion that manufacturers are either right or wrong, whether or not their product is forgiven or not. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit plenty of shots. And believe me, I will spray it around a bit in terms of finding the center of the club face. And what will 
that's probably coming out the centre. Oh, well, it performed very well anyway. And what we'll then try and establish, like I said, is whether or not one is more forgiving than the other, or is forgiveness just an absolute load of marketing nonsense? Right, so I've hit plenty of balls, or enough balls at least, for me to see in terms of data what I'm looking at and what I'm comparing. I've hit five iron, I've hit seven iron in both models. Eliminated nine irons, I don't think they tell us a great deal. But what I'm really interested in is this impact location. We've got a couple of examples here where it really does show whether or not forgiveness is a thing or not, at least it does in my opinion. I'll start off with the 2215 iron. The 5 iron is the one where I'm looking for more forgiveness on a longer shaft. I'm going to struggle a little bit more with it. Um, we've got a shot here that I'm going to show you first of all, which is basically, it's a little bit off center, it's a little bit more toey, but it's certainly very low in the grooves. Uh, 81 club head speed, as you can see, ball speed's 125 and a carrier 193. Fantastic from where that strike location is. And I'm comparing this to the next shot down which is um, an 80 mile an hour club head speed, 123 ball speed and a 191 carry from Verti bang in the middle. So for me, comparing from the centre to an off centre hit, Verti no difference whatsoever. That's a great sign for me. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the apex. I've just noted down here two shots. First one, very much again, low in the grooves. I have a habit of doing that, getting off the bottom of the club face. Um, 70. Uh, we'll go almost 78 club head speed, 120 ball speed with a 180 carry, and then compare it to literally the next shot I hit, which is virtually identical in terms of club head speed, ball speed again identical, carry distance almost identical, as were I've just noticed the two peak heights as well. And they were very much different strike locations, one very much centre of the club face, one again down that bottom grooves. So for me, what it tells me is both of these clubs, clubs are very forgiving and that's a massive positive tick in the box for any average golfer that's considering either of these sets of irons. Right, we will very briefly go through the numbers because they are quite interesting to be honest with you. There's a couple of things I just want to clarify first of all and that's the loft of these clubs. In the 7 iron the apex is 30.5 degrees, the 225 is 30. But then it switches up in the 5 iron where the apex becomes the stronger lofted at 23.5 degrees and the 225 is 24. So a weird bit in terms of the gap in between the clubs that you might want to have a look at. It certainly has a strange impact in terms of the numbers. Starting off with the 7 iron 225, um, I also clarified the length of shaft which is identical and I'll tell you that is to do with club head speed. 77.7 um, .7 with the 7 iron, 173 carry, 17.3 launch land angle of 41.5 slightly worrying for me is that land angle not as steep as i'd want it to be um again launching just a little bit low for me in terms of that seven iron you look at the apex it's the club head speed that dropped off by a couple of a mile an hour therefore impacted on ball speed maybe and the carry distance was considerably different but it launched a bit higher and its land angle was better so that was interesting then you go into the five iron numbers 225 81 club head speed 125 ball speed 188 carry decent launch angle with a five iron um, and then into the apex just to finish off and again you see that drop off in club head speed which was why i was querying um, the actual uh, length of shaft but they were different shafts so that could um, have some impact on that club head speed throughout but again a drop off therefore in ball speed and carry distance numbers in terms of launch angle very very similar indeed I'll quickly put the uh, dispersion charts up for both irons. They pretty much perform pretty similar to me, not a lot to split them. So the summary would be that I don't particularly like that number on that 2257 iron in terms of the descent angle, which was a bit of a worry for me, and the launch angle a little bit more of a flatter ball flight. I'd want to change that a little, and I'm sure that can be done in custom fit. You then go back to impact location, which we looked at earlier, which is my interpretation of forgiveness they both did incredibly well the big separator for me in these irons is the way they look and the way they sound and feel there is a different the 225 has took itself into almost like i say its own category because they're classing itself as this player's distance iron and when it was the mp20 hmb it certainly fit in that category in terms of the size of the top line in terms of its overall profile but I keep doing head-to-heads -heads with this 225 and it's hard to pigeonhole as to where it sits. That's where it sits in Mizuno's lineup, but then when you put it up against the Apex, it looks so much smaller and more compact and for me, much more appealing. So again, this one really is down to personal um, choices. I would choose looks 
profile feel I'd be 225. I'd want to then get those numbers fitted, uh, changed differently in a custom fit and hopefully get those numbers a bit more what I would like to see in terms of performance. But like I said, that's just for me. Really two really, really good sets of irons. And what I love is just the fact that right now, wherever you go, whatever set of irons you're drawn to, you're getting a damn decent set of irons in your hand. There is absolutely no doubt about that. The product right now is superb in my opinion and uh, as good as it has ever been in every single department. Anyway, that's me done. That's my feedback on it. As I always say in the end of these videos, go and get custom fit. If you tried either of them, give me your feedback. That's what I always like to hear and start that conversation going with your fellow golfers in the comment section. I'm done. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.